Okay folks, today we're going to talk about bits. There's been a lot of people ask about them and understand that when somebody asks, that means they ask my opinion. So that's all you're getting is my opinion. As you know, I'm pretty traditional on certain things. And the spade bit, which is this one, is something that I take very seriously. It's been said that if you want to make a spade bit horse, just put a spade bit in their mouth, and I don't believe that. I believe there's a protocol, there's a timeline, and it can be from four to five years. And our Art of the Bridal Horse is a video we made to kind of explain how that how that journey goes. And the short story is, is that this spoon right here lays on the tongue. Okay. When you pull on the reins, the spoon leaves the tongue. That's the signal. That's how good this can get, okay? So that's why it takes a long time to do this. The payoff is, is that to me, it's the highest level of compliment that you can pay to a Western riding horse. The cheek piece, is a Santa Barbara. So the name for this would be a Santa Barbara spade. Santa Barbara is this design. Now this all isn't a fluke. This is hundreds of years of proven craftsmanship. The back side of this circle, when you pull back because of the weight in the back, it pushes the bit forward again but it doesn't push it past the point of comfort. That's called a counterbalance. On a horse that's not straight up and down, like one I'm gonna show you in a minute, you need to have the swing. This is what brings it come back to position. If you can picture a pendulum, when a horse's head is hanging down, the bit matches the skull and the neck and the horse Everything about the horse, the bit has to match. When everything is correct, the bit just literally hangs down like a pendulum. So now it's so light that when you move this spoon, they feel it. Now I showed you this cheek piece. Now look at this cheek piece. Mechanically, they're exact, exactly the same. This is a Santa Barbara cheek. This is a Santa Barbara cheek. The only difference is a slight bit of distance between the purchase and the purchase on this one. That's from there to there. But what I'm getting at is that they're both the same idea. This is the counterbalance back here and it'll put the bit back where it belongs. So what happens is a lot of people, they see this cheek piece and they see it's silver. And some recognize it as a Santa Barbara. In their mind, they think it's a spade bit, but it's not. If you look at a thousand guys or 150 with this cheek piece in their mouth, maybe one or two are gonna be spade mouthpieces. The rest are all gonna be half breeds. So you need to understand that just because you see silver, it doesn't mean it's a spade. So now this is a San Joaquin mouthpiece. That's the name of it. Every bit has two names, the cheek and the mouth. This is a San Joaquin half-breed with a Santa Barbara cheek. I mean, it just goes on and on. So please note that that is silver. That's a San Joaquin because of the place for the tongue to move more comfortably. And now, the true half-breed, as far as I'm concerned, is this mouthpiece. Straight bar, half-breed port. Cheek piece, Las Cruces. Now Bruce told me that the Las Cruces came from the crossroads just north of Santa Barbara after you go through the tunnel. I'm sure you've all been there, but that's where the used to be our crossroads and a bit maker lived there. Well, I think that's dead on the money. I've read other stories, but I think that's the best one. So this is a half-breed Las Cruces. This bit, the cheek is longer than the spade. It's more leverage. 
Very few horses can take this bit because the cheeks are straight up and down. So the horse has to be like an Andalusian and the head would go like this, not like that. So when it's bridled up, it's almost straight up and down. Well, I think I mentioned it before, but the conquistadors, the first explorers, when they unloaded their horses off the ships, they weren't quarter horses. I know this is a shock, but Doc Bar wasn't around yet. So they were Spanish horses, and the Spanish horses were conducive to these bits and mouthpieces. So in my opinion, what's happened over the years is that you'll see a lot of spades where the spoon goes farther back. And the reason is, is the only way for it to be comfortable on a horse like this, because they naturally hold their head this way, it has to lean back farther because they're out here. An Andalusian is here, so it doesn't need to lean back. Now, this is the San Joaquin mouthpiece. Santa Barbara cheek, silver. San Joaquin mouthpiece. Alloy cheek, it's Manel is the name of the material. Here's the difference, $500, $150. Mechanically, exactly the same. No difference. Now I will show you how this, this, and this works. It's very simple. It's called a curb strap. When you tighten the curb strap and you pull on the reins, the curb strap pushes behind the jaw and the horse stops. So you build from there. If you haven't got all your lateral work done, side passing, open gates, shutting gates, uh, leg canter departures, leg yields, everything you ever need to get done, you're not ready for any of these. As soon as you do have it, you get rid of this, and depending on your wallet, you get this or this. In my world, you don't go from riding a horse until they're 10 years old in a snaffle and then think you're going to put a spade on them. I just, it just doesn't work. That, that train's already pulled out a long time ago. But many, many horses all over the country, I show up and they're in a snaffle and three days later when I leave, the, the owner is riding them in a western bit. This is called a western bit, just in case you're curious. Don't mind the concho, it's a vulgar display of wealth. <laughs> that is where I'd like you to end up if you're interested in riding western. If you stay in a snaffle bit the rest of your life, well then, I think crossdresser comes to mind. It's either English or western for me. Now, that being said, there's a lot of ranches where guys never quit the snaffle because they're handed a string of horses that are cold-jawed and dead-sided. So they ride them in a snaffle because they got big country. It's just the way it works. It's no big deal. So what I've done with my bit is it helped me, all this helped me design the bit that I came up with. And this horse right here is going to go home in one of these or one of these, depending on how cheap the guy I'm riding it for is. So I've already explained to you about how I ride a colt, because a lot of colts I've started, want the owner wants them home in a snaffle. They're not going to make a spade bit horse. They're not going to do anything like I'm doing. So I ride them in this, which is a solid mouthpiece, as opposed to a broken mouthpiece. Now, if you'll notice, there's some resemblances here in these bits. The cricket. This causes pain when you pull down on it. All right, that's the idea. Get the horse to pay attention. After two rides, the horse learns to put their tongue underneath this mouthpiece and protect their bars. The tongue is unbelievably thick and strong, so it can, it can protect itself. Now, when some dink puts a twisted wire 
in the mouth and saws it back and forth, the tongue cannot protect its mouth. The tongue takes the hit. If you ever notice, on a horse that's cut up from a bit, the tongue is cut. The bars are bruised. So nobody will ever convince me there's a reason for a twisted wire snaffle. Now, there's also another world that I haven't mentioned, because I've told you before, I come from a ranching background, and I like the California discipline. This has nothing to do with horse shows or performance world, nothing. It's a whole different culture. Then there's this other third world called the correction bit. Well, the word correction was absolute marketing genius. And it sold, it's still selling thousands of bits. But now I think they should change the name to collection bit. Because if you go to anybody's horse trailer, our tack room, you'll see several correction bits hanging in their barn. That's their choice. What it means to me is that there's so many joints and every new one has a different joint in it that you can never ever talk black and white to a horse. Never. No matter what you move, you're doing a gray area. So now the whole point of all of this is that how much of this brain is focused on its mouth as in protecting it and how much of its brain is focused on your seat and asking what it is you need. So to me it's pretty simple math that if you can put the best mouthpiece you can on a horse, take your time and use your skeleton, this is to keep collection and self-carriage. The body is what rides the horse. Now, we all watch the videos, I've seen them, and um, I've seen a horse that a guy was doctoring yearlings on in a halter, and he said he's just fine. Well, if that horse has never had anything else in its mouth but that halter, then I commend him. If he can get that done, that's damn commendable. Now, that being said, the difference is, is that I am from the world of collection and self-carriage. Okay, so this, the yearlings that get doctored that day, it's kind of irrelevant to them what you're riding. That's his choice, I get my choice, everybody gets to do what they want. But I hope this helps explain the bits. And please know that a spade bit isn't for every horse. That's one reason they came up with these. And you gotta know that after World War II, there was more of these started showing up than these because there was more people that had money that wanted to ride and they called them horse shows. They weren't hand enough to ride these so they started cutting the spoons off and more of these showed up. That was the transition, the timeline. Oh, and I know for a fact there's a whole bunch of guys that have got their eye on my barbecue instead of, they haven't heard a damn thing I've said so I might as well fill you in. I don't want to brag. But this top is a lid that comes off and it's a disc blade. There's one thing I found good for farm implements and that's the lid of a barbecue. Inside on the bottom is another disc blade pointed up. I learned this in Australia. They line the fireplace with disc blades and so now they have a heat later. What this does is makes a whole lot of heat and of course with these high grade pieces of rebar you can move them up here, don't want to brag, move them up here for a roast or smoking meat and down here for grilling. Now the lid as you know this is custom made because it says Crystal X on it so nothing but the best on our outfit. Alright, let me stop a minute because my bride who has all the brains will tell me what I forgot to say. Thank you. <laughs> now folks, there's always this part. I'm, I'm learning how to do this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and say you liked it. Well, if you watched it, thank you. Adios.